Ready? Man, our phone yep. lines are hot. So excited to have you with us today. I'm here with my co-host Justin Koff, Megan Youngman, and Dr. Jeff Poplarski. Remember, each week we explore the pillars of player development, which includes instruction, coaching, physical conditioning, equipment, and mental training. So guys, how about Stuart Sink this week? 47-year-old Stuart Sink winning a, a tournament on the PGA Tour. What do you guys think about that? Pretty impressive. I mean, getting to that age and uh, and still winning and having the, the fortitude to go out there and work hard, man, that was impressive. You know, and that's his second win just in this season. It's fantastic. Yeah, and I think fitness played a big part of that. Uh, those wins. As a 47-year-old person, I think he's starting to dedicate his body more to the fitness component, which we will elaborate on that in a few seconds. Absolutely. I think that the other thing that, that really uh, contributed to this is that he's got a new uh, pre-shot routine and a new mental um, uh, game. That There's a gentleman named Scott Fawcett uh, who, took, uh, who created this system, and it was based primarily on mathematics. But part of the system is eliminating clutter from your mind. Um, you know, I think that you guys, Justin and Megan, would agree that we have students that come to us and they hit the ball great on the range, and then they can't get it on the course. I mean, even for me, I, I did my, I, I went on track man the other day, I hit 20 shots. My average disbursement rate, right to left, was only seven yards. So if you think about that, that means I'm either hitting it seven yards right on average or seven yards left on average. That's 14 yards. That means I should hit literally every single green. I should be shooting in the 60s if I make a couple putts every time I go on the golf course. But what happens when I get into a tournament? Obviously, mental chatter starts, you start doubting yourself, you're not as relaxed as you are on the golf range, and when mental chatter starts happening, your muscles tense up, you know, and uh, you start seeing targets, you know, you start seeing water that you didn't see out of bounds, you start seeing heavy rough if you're playing Beth Page Black. Uh, so the key to basically taking your game from the range to the course is eliminating that mental chatter. And what Stewart says that he does is he, he creates a script for himself. So basically, he goes out on the course, or the night before, he creates a script. So uh, uh, he has a pre shot routine. Uh, I can take it even one step further. Scott Fawcett did a study of Tiger Woods at the PGA Championship on Beth Page. He timed with the television um, Tiger's drives for, I think, almost 18 holes. For the first, until he got to nine, well, until he got to 11, every single one of his drives, he did the exact same pre-shot routine each time, and he, he pulled the trigger, he took his backswing at the 15th second, every single time. He had the same routine. It's kind of like a basketball player taking the same amount of bounces before he shoots a, pre -shot, uh, a free throw. On the 11th hole, Tiger took one more look at the target. He usually took two looks. He took two extra seconds to hit that drive, and he pushed it way right. And he never recovered that day. It was like something uh, got, him, got in his head. He had that mental chatter, which led to tension in his body, possibly. I don't know, maybe it's on number 11, you know, on the right side, there's a lot of traps. It's very, very heavy rough. It's a very long hole. The wind's always in your face. Something got in his head, and he never recovered that day. So for us and for Stuart, what he would do is he, he writes out a script. He, he actually will talk himself through his pre-shot routine. For me, my pre-shot routine is I will say to myself, literally, because if I'm talking out loud, no mental chatter can get in there. I stand behind the ball five paces behind. I look at the target. I see the shot that I want to hit. I see the height. I see the shape of it. I see uh, it landing. I take five steps to the ball, and I count my steps as I'm walking because, again, if I'm counting, nothing else can enter my mind because my mind is full. I, I twirl my club uh, twice as I do that. I waggle once, look at the target. Waggle twice, look at the target. Take a deep breath in slowly blow it out, put the club on the ground, 
and I swing the golf club. If I get distracted at any point, I step away and start all over again because it's going to mean that I'm going to hit a bad shot, which we call in any way in our junior golf yep. practice, right? <laughs> and anyways, when you go ahead, you get right. distracted and you hit it anyway. So anyway, if you watched the tournament last week, Stuart Sink did the same thing. You could hear him talking to his son, who's his caddy, and they, he was walking through those steps. Does anyone else have anything on that? Well, if we can take that one step further, Kelly, so many of our students always talk about how much they have a list in their head. You know, they've got a list in their head when they're over the ball. This, you know, this goes all the way through um, competitive training, but especially recreational players, you know, that overload of swing thoughts is too much, and it causes that same tension. Right. So, you know, the one recommendation I have is that you have to come into your round. You can have two swing thoughts over the ball, but only if one is in priority of the other. So one always has to be deemed more important. Sometimes it's just an acknowledgement. You know, right. for example, a uh, slow backswing, or I'm, or I'm thinking about my tempo of my backswing, um, mm. something about my balance, you know, make sure I get through the ball smoothly. Something right. like that can yep. be, but the simpler the thought, the better. Right. Uh, because we have to really be in performance mode when you're over the ball to hit the golf shot. Right. You know, the driving range is the place to dummy it down and think about all these Absolutely. other things. Absolutely. I would say that the driving range is uh, is practice, yep. just like if you're doing drills in basketball. But game time is the golf course. You should not be thinking, if you're in a basketball court, are you, court, are you thinking about, oh, my gosh, how do we do this uh, this um, play that we've always, you just do it. It's instinctual because you've practiced it so often and then you create your pre-shot routine. So I think that's a great point and I can't tell you how many students and golfers that I've seen over the years not practice their pre-shot routine, right? You're on the driving range, you're practicing and you're hitting golf ball after golf ball after golf ball. Well, how can you, how can you use that script that you've created if you're not practicing it, right? So I think ideally one of my recommendations for golfers would be slow down on the driving range, right? Take a little bit more time to actually go through a routine before you hit each golf ball. And I can't tell you how many years I've been coaching juniors and telling them this and they still don't do it golfers still don't do it but if you're listening I highly encourage you to get on the driving range and practice your routine and like Kelly said use a stopwatch create that that time that it's gonna take you to hit each shot and see if you can take it on the 15th second each time and I think that'll help you transition to the golf course yeah another thought that I would have is there's a term called transfer learning it takes about 50 hours of learning a, a motor pattern before it sticks in your body. So going on the range and practicing your pre-shot routine, you don't just do it you know, two or three times. You have to do it for about 50 hours until it ingrains in your brain, and then you just transfer it right out to the course, and it'll be very, very effective for your game. That's wonderful. All right, I think what we should do is we should take a commercial break, and then when we get back, what we will do is we will talk to Jeff more about what Stuart Sink is doing with his... 47-year-old body. Spine Care Technologies is an amazingly innovative medical device company. Their flagship product, the Extend Track Elite, is world-renowned among pain management centers, sports medicine experts, physical therapists, and chiropractors. Spine Care Technologies is dedicated to improving sports performance by relieving acute chronic back pain and its disabling effects. The Extend Track Elite is FDA cleared, non surgical, drug free, and has been praised by health professionals around the world for its excellent clinical results in treating low back pain. Learn more at spinecaretechnologies.com. The all new Hyperflex from FootJoy is tuned for golf with every detail designed and developed with the golfer in mind. Starting at the top, it looks awesome. The fresh material on the upper provides a great fit that forms to your foot and is fully waterproof. Next, the all-new Rapid Fit system ensures a dialed-in, precision fit, wrapping your foot in complete security. It offers incredible comfort with a new Stratofoam midsole, coupled with the OptiFlex outsole so that the shoe and the foot move in unison, whether walking or swinging. Available now in Laced and the new Rapid Fit system, shop now at footjoy.com. Hey, have you guys seen the new TaylorMade driver? Introducing the TaylorMade Sim 2. Built differently around a forged aluminum ring that shifts weight in new ways. 
They made it so long and forgiving, golfers can't wait for their next chance to tee off. Sim 2 gives every golfer the confidence to swing away every time they step up to the tee, only from TaylorMade. And we are back. Remember, our call-in number is 631-955-5400. All right, Jeff, tell us a little bit about what, uh, and I'm very interested in this because I'm about Stuart's age and I have every ache and pain you can imagine. How is he keeping himself so fit week in, week, week out on that tour? You know, he made a comment that he said that his setup, changing his setup and using his bigger muscles on the backswing accessed more power, which ultimately increased his ball speed and also increased his attack angle. So those big muscles uh, in the spine, like the lats, or a muscle called the QL, quadratus lumborum, or even the glutes, which we call the king of the golf swing, are important muscles to develop to increase more power. Unfortunately, the older you get, there is a condition called sarcopenia, which means the volume of your muscles actually decrease the older you get. So Stuart was really concentrating on not having sarcopenia and working those big muscles now, there, are, there is a situation called backswing loaders and downswing loaders, and Stuart really concentrated on the downswing loading of those muscles, which ultimately increases clubhead speed and then ball speed, and that was his program, working in the gym on those really big muscles uh, in the spine and also in the glutes. Dr. Jeff is obviously a doctor because I understood about every other word of that. <laughs> so if you had to boil that down with all, without all the technical terms, what exactly is happening with him? Yeah, what's happening is that he's transforming his body and he's getting in the gym uh, to increase his club at speed. Don't be intimidated by that word sarcopenia. If you're 40, 50, 60 years old, look at yourself in the mirror. You'll see your muscle volume does decrease a little bit and if you put resistant exercise into those muscles they get bigger and that's what that's what uh, Stuart is doing uh, to increase his ball head speed. And let me ask you something you know we hear about as we get older our rear end gets smaller and we all know that the glutes are where the power most of the power comes from the, the quads the glutes the thighs the core in general I mean, as we age, it gets, well, in my case, it's getting bigger, unfortunately, but uh, not because it's getting muscle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what could we do, or what do you think Stuart's doing to, to maintain that glute and, and that fitness in his, his core and his legs? Sure. Yeah, you could go on golfinstitute.com, and you could look at a whole bunch of exercises that we have put up there to increase uh, glute strength. Uh, bridging is just one exercise where you get on your back and then you lift your belly button all the way up to the air and then you hold that position and the glutes are contracted. A very great exercise, low-tech exercise, doesn't require any type of weights or, or anything like that, using your own body weight. That would be one exercise. The squat and the lunges are also great exercise for glute strength. Again, the, the glute is the king of the golf swing. And why they call it a king, they did some great studies. They actually did nerve test, nerve conduction test, where they put needles in the glute, and the glute is constantly contracting through the whole entire swing, and that's why it's called the king. You know, it's funny you say that the squats, because I remember I have this student named John Igo, and he's a semi-professional, and he added one season two years ago about, well, he was, he was doing, af after this, John, uh, um, Jeff, he started working with you, but he told me that he added 20 yards onto his driver in a very short amount of time, and all he would do is he would um, set the coffee maker, and he would do squats until it was done um, brewing. Yeah, that's, that's a great a, idea, yeah, and it it's a, reasonable. Yeah. I think a lot of times when we're trying to add distance and we think of all these things that Dr. Jeff is bringing to us, you know, about how to condition and how to, how to strengthen our glutes, especially, you know, it's something so new and it seems tedious. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be. It no. be as simple as that. All right, I think what we need to do is go to a caller. And again, our number is 631-955-5400. Okay, who do we have here?
Well, fitness-wise, I think we pretty much just covered it, you know. Um, I think that, and Justin can speak to this, because all winter we do this with our, our golf performance um, speed work. Justin, do you want to take that? Yeah, so I think uh, ideally, I mean, strength is going to be a big thing there, but also doing some speed drills and exercises. And one of the things I encourage golfers to do is uh, use the speed stick program where you're creating a ton of speed uh, with different levels. And you also do it on both sides of your body. You're kind of balancing out the muscles to make sure that you're really developing each side. I find that a lot of golfers, you know, as, as a single handed player, you're, you're swinging right handed all the time. Well, the muscles on the other side of your body are not getting worked. So I think making some really hard and fast swings in both directions would really help to uh, to kind of develop some speed and power and, and help you hit a little further. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, we have in our body fast twitch muscles and slow twitch muscles. I unfortunately have an abundance of slow twitch muscles uh, and I'd like more fast twitch. People at my age think that they could never develop fast twitch muscles. It's easier to develop when you're younger, when you're, you know, preteen to teen, but Jeff, it's never too late to develop uh, fast twitch muscles, is it? That is correct. Yeah, it's actually called tight 2X of the fast twitch. You know, there's a thing called the big break theory, which basically, like uh, Justin had said, training both sides is probably one of the most effective things you could do to increase your power and your distance on your ball. So if you're a right-handed golfer and you're swinging just right-handed, certainly go to the left side. There's also another thing called overload and overspeed training. Uh, so what happens is, like Justin is explaining with the super speed sticks, you're going from like lighter clubs to heavier clubs. That's the overspeed and overload training, and that has a really positive uh, effect on club head speed. Great. All right, Derek, does that answer your question? Very good. Do we have any more? Another caller? All right, caller. Who are we speaking to? How are you? What kind of question do you have for us? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, you know, where you get energy is from a, a macronutrient called the carbohydrate. You probably heard of that term. And carbs are fruits and vegetables. So that would be a recommendation where maybe, you know, the morning that you're playing or the night before, cut up some green peppers, red peppers, maybe some blackberries, blueberries, and keep them in a little Tupperware. And when you're coming, you know, to maybe the 10th hole, I would start to graze uh, on those fruits and vegetables. One of the techniques that we give golfers is for every shot that they take, when you go back to the to the bag, maybe take a couple of berries and put it in your uh, you know put it in your mouth, and that's going to help you out. So try that technique, and I think that will give you a little bit more energy to complete your 18 holes. Great, Bob. Do you have anything else for us? Very good. Thank you for calling. We appreciate it. Remember, our call-in number is 631-955-5400. Hey, golfers, most of you have heard about the championship course at Bethpage Black, but it surprises me how many people don't know that there are four other courses. Not everyone needs to be a scratch golfer to play at Bethpage. The other four courses are set up for beginners, women, juniors, and high handicappers alike. After golf, visit our 4,000-square-foot pro shop, where every item down to the golf balls are logoed with the Black Page Beth Page Black logo. Visit Beth Page Black Golf Course for more info or to shop online. I think we'll take a uh, commercial break, and after that, we'll take another caller at 631 955 5400. If you suffer from low back pain, joint stiffness, or sciatica due to herniated disc or acute facet joint problems, you need to know about a spine therapy device called Extend Track Elite. Extend Track Elite incorporates multi axis spinal positioning, traction, and joint and soft tissue mobilization. Your doctor or therapist can use Extend Track Elite to move your body into pain relieving therapeutic positions that keep your body relaxed as your spine is mobilized. Learn more about Extend Track Elite at spinecaretechnologies.com. Ever hit that one perfect iron shot and think, well, that's the one shot that will keep me coming back? Well, why does it have to be one shot? 
Why can't it be 5, 10, or even 50 shots that keep you coming back? That was TaylorMade's inspiration when they designed the all-new TaylorMade Sim 2 irons. Their unique cat-back design is engineered for more forgiveness, more distance, more often. Feel what it's like to play with better irons with the all-new Sim 2s from TaylorMade. FootJoy sets the standard for golf shoe performance and style in 2021 with the all-new Premier Series, inspired by golf shoes of the past, but supercharged for today's game. Designed in collaboration with the world's best players like Justin Thomas, Adam Scott, and Max Homa, the Premier Series features classic styling with premium waterproof leathers and great details that exude craftsmanship. That is complemented by state-of-the-art comfort and performance features like the Versatrax Plus outsole. Learn more about the Premier Series at footjoy.com. The original Andy G chipping and putty line is a great way to improve your chipping skills and save strokes on the green. The chipping line can improve your distance control up to 90 yards. The objective of the chipping line is to hit a variety of chip shots on or near the chosen color. It will improve your rhythm, tempo, and consistency. Check them out at madskillsgolfcompany.com. Welcome back. Again, our number is 631-955-5400. Keep those calls coming. Before we take our next caller, because part of the pillars of, of golf performance is equipment, I would love to know, does anyone know what Stuart Singh is playing and what kind of clubs he has? You would be amazed at how traditional this guy's golf bag is. Really? Yeah, he carries his driver, he carries a three wood, he carries a seven wood. Seven wood? There aren't any hybrids <laughs> in there. Really? He has a three iron and then he jumps down to a five iron through gap wedge. Wow, that's, that's For, like 1980s golf. It, it really <laughs> is. For his wedges... So traditional with a 56 degree, and for all of our recreational golfers, that's traditionally a sand wedge. Uh, he carries an, a 60 degree. So let's go back to his bounce angles. On his 56 degree, he's got an 8 degree bounce angle. And on his 60 degree, he's got a 4 degree bounce angle. What? And then his putter. That's it. Wow. That's crazy. It is. It's simple. It's traditional. And that's how he's playing golf. You know what, and I think that's kind of important because, you know, and I always say to my students, you know, they say, well, what club should I hit and what should I do? I say, hit the club you feel most confident with. And obviously he's confident with that variation in his bag. So why would he change it up? He won two tournaments this year. He's, he's a great golfer. You have to be, when you hit a golf shot, you have to be committed to your target and you have to have no doubt that that is the perfect club for you. How many times have you gotten, you stand over the ball, you're like, is it an eight iron, is it a seven iron? You keep going back and forth. You're never gonna hit a good shot. Just pick one and hit it. And by the way, 99% of amateurs always come up short. So, and we're gonna go over that in another um, show that it's called Decade Golf, which I referenced earlier. If you are in any doubt whatsoever, take the longer club. I've never seen anyone hit a ball over a green. Have you guys ever seen anyone hit a ball over a green? No. no. So the goal is in golf is to make less bogeys. It's not to make birdies. It's to eliminate bogeys and double bogeys. When in doubt, feel good that you're not going to hit a ball over a green. Take the longer club and hit it. Right. And I want to go back to these wedges a little bit here because a lot of our recreational players... Um, you're not liking the 60 degree. You're, you know, you're, you've got it in your bag because you heard you should get one. But then the first thing you do with your coach is you say, you need to teach me how to hit this thing. Because yeah. the only time you're pulling it out of the bag is if you're behind a bunker and you need to get it over. Um, you're not pulling it out in the bunker, which I would suggest starting to tool around with a little bit. Um, but that 56 degree is a lot more comfortable um, in, you know, off the fairway and off the short grass. So a lot of times that's because if you, you know, if you don't have a lot of club head speed, that 60 degree, you have to understand that when you hit a wedge, the ball rolls up the face. 60 degrees is a lot of loft. Mm -hmm. And this is why you're constantly telling your coach or your pro, you know, I, I hit it, it just goes straight up in the air and comes down. I don't, I don't have any distance control with that club. So that is absolutely fine. It's normal. Yeah. I think you do need to learn how to hit it. So go see your coach. Um, but indefinitely that 56 would be a better club for you to pick out if you're a higher handicapper. 
And don't you think that most high handicap golfers are not playing? Well, that's this is that's not fair of me to say because there are a lot of country clubs out there with very fast greens and they have high handicappers. But the high handicappers that we teach are playing primarily public courses that have slower greens. You're never really going to be in a situation as, in a high handicapper where you have to get up and down. You're just trying to hit the green. So I would eliminate a 60 degree wedge out of your bag, period, until your skills are such that you can handle it. So wait till you're a 15 handicap, a 12 handicap, and then add the 60 degree in later on. There's no need for it early on. A 50, you can do everything you need to with a 56 degree in. Uh, a sand wedge. Yeah, and you know, at one of our future shows, we're going to really spotlight short game and how to hit these wedges. Um, so keep tuning in to us for, for one of those shows that we have coming up. And Kelly, just you know, one comment about that that you had said that most amateurs hit the ball short. You know, we do have a vision assessment. This is where the body swing connection comes in, where we have a uh, an assessment we do with the eyes, and we, we actually diagnose an esophuric golfer or an exophuric golfer. An esophuric golfer is someone that's constantly hitting the ball short, and an exophuric is somebody hitting the ball long. So we have that assessment, you know, in, on our tool belt that we could do on golfers, and then we train the eyes to see exactly what you're seeing, which is great to hit the ball, you know, at the pin. Wonderful. We have a couple minutes left. I don't think it's time to take a, enough time to take another caller. It's only three minutes, but you know, I always I'm obsessed with distance. I love every, I think every golfer is obsessed with distance, whether you are a, a woman who hits it 100 yards or a, a man who is a senior or a tour player. Justin, can you just tell the, the group, because we talked about Stuart Singh's distance earlier, about how he's generating that power in his swing? Yeah, and I think Dr. Jeff talked about that a little earlier in the fact that he's using the big muscles and can't tell you how many golfers that we see that don't know what that means. And we talked earlier about the glutes and the core and all the bigger muscles in our body. We have our fast twitch muscles, which are our hands and our wrists, which really help produce speed. But being able to utilize those big muscles, being able to use the ground and our legs and really create pressure into the ground to explode off of it, I think is, is one of the keys. And then going back to having the strength and, and the, the, back, the flexibility and the balance to actually produce that speed and stay in position. So big muscles, um, working on strength and flexibility and balance, I think are the, the keys for Stewart as, as he added the distance he did. Yeah, and, and, what, and it's sequencing. Like we are very much into technology at Bethpage, so we use a K-Vest. And so we strap a, these sensors on your back, your hips, your arm, and your, your hand. And so what is supposed to happen in the golf swing, uh, you know, in an ideal world, is that your hips are spo you're supposed to, your feet are gr on the ground. You're using the ground. You're, you use the ground and your hips come through first via the, your legs in the ground. Then your chest comes through, then your arms come through, and then you deliver the power to the golf club. What most amateurs do is they try to hit it so hard that it's the reverse. They're swinging the club around, then their arm kind of comes through at the same time as their club, then their chest, and then their hips, so it's the reverse. And we're going to get into sequencing maybe next week. I think that's a fun topic. I could talk about it literally all day. Um, but it's really a matter of slowing down your swing, and really getting uh, that sequencing down of hips, chest, arms, club head. Saving the energy in the club until the impact. Okay, I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. That went very fast again. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we obviously have a very, very special thank you to our title sponsor, Spine Care Technologies. They're the maker of Extend Track Elite Spinal Therapy Device. Last week we talked about it. It's this brilliant, brilliant device that gives you, um, uh, it, it relieves compaction uh, in your spine, and it's wonderful. We also want to special thanks, uh, give a special thanks to Jay Lindbergh for dressing me today. Uh, TaylorMade and Mad Skills Golf. Oh, we have new sponsors. We have FootJoy and Titleist. So again, play well this week, and we'll see you all next Saturday at 8:30. You're listening to WB. WD in Islip, New York. Okay, for having almost a nervous breakdown getting here, I thought that went pretty well. That was, that was great. great. Yeah, it was better. Because we can talk forever. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. better every week. Nice job. Thanks, good guys. Job, that was good.